I'm Matt. I'm Kerry. We are the Stagmer Brothers of Baltimore Knife and Sword. We're going to be building some of your favorite weapons, and some weapons that you've never seen before. This is Man at Arms, Reforged. For the maneuver gear swords from Attack on Titan, all I have to do to get this build started is to draw the blades. Now we decided to make them two inches wide, 31 inches long, and they're gonna have a nice clip point, trim off all the excess. Now let's draw the tang, three inches long. Trim all this up. You never wanna have these hard transitions at your tang shoulder area. That really can allow that blade to just shear and break right across the tang. Definitely don't want that. So I'm gonna use the fillet tool or fillet. Boom. We won't have to worry about it breaking at all. Now the very last thing I have to do is I have to add in the little notch. When we make the handle, it's gonna rotate and release a pin. These blades can be removed out, put another one in, the pin will come back and it'll be perfectly secure. We've selected some 1095 high carbon steel to cut the blades out of and we'll use our CNC plasma table to cut it out. All right, as you see, John's already cut out the blades for the sword for the 3D gear. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and deburr them. As you can see, we cut out three of these because in the anime and also in the live action, when they cut down some of the Titans, their blades break and they gotta be replaceable. So now I'm gonna go ahead, clean up all the edges, and once I'm done, I'm gonna hand it off to Ilya for heat treatment. For these Attack on Titan swords, they're mostly modern made, but there are a few forging elements we can add. To start, we're gonna do the handguard. This guard looks a lot like a handbrake on a bicycle, so Ilya's gonna first taper some stock out, create the ball in the end, then move to the anvil to give it the proper final shape. So Ilya's gone ahead and forced out the lower guard for the attack on Titan sword. So now I'm gonna go through, rough it all out, and start to make it look pretty. Once he's roughed off the surface, he goes to the slack belt. This will allow him to smooth the radius surfaces and take out any flats that are left from working directly on the contact wheel. Since these blades are made out of 1095 high carbon, Ilya's gotta watch his temperatures. Once the pieces have the correct soak and reach a critical temperature, he takes them out and quenches them into the oil.
I'm gonna go ahead and draw the base of the handle for Carrie. Now he's got a lot of figuring out to do on how this all works and where everything's gonna pivot, but I'm gonna give him the base drawing to start from and he can work from there. Almost every time you see these blades, they're a little different, but this is basically the perimeter that we wanna work from and they're gonna be pretty awesome. Now these triggers actually work with the jetpack and unfortunately we don't have the tech here to make a jetpack, but we're still gonna add the triggers in because hey, you never know. There's a few more pieces that will be made separately. We'll probably do two different pieces, then we make handle slabs that go here to make all the cut work. But this is the base of our guard. Let's go get it cut out. After quenching, the next stage in producing a blade or any other tool is the tempering phase. Now, if you plot toughness and hardness on a curve in a relationship to each other, at about 400 degrees, the curve experiences a dip. That dip indicates a suboptimal performance at that specific temperature. Now, if you want to produce the optimal performance for your tool, you either have to undershoot the temperature, which gives you a very hard and relatively tough tool, or overshoot it to approximately 410 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to overshoot it to 410 degrees because I don't want the blades here to break in the demo. All right, just got these back from Alia. They've already been heat treated and tempered. So they're ready for me to grind. Now you guys will notice that we CNC these instead of forging them. Well, they're big box cutters. And well, you don't forge box cutters. We're gonna edge them, make them look pretty, and see how they turn out. Since these blades are disposable and break, we're making multiple blades so that they can all be fit into the handle. Bill's gonna go to the grinder and begin to create the edge. We'll then polish the pieces and do the scoring along the sides to show where the breaks are. With the drawings completed for the primary section of these handles, John now goes to the plasma and cuts them out of thick steel. We'll be doing a fair amount of sculpting on them afterwards. Now that the blades have their rough ground edges established, Bill can move on to polishing out the flats. We're gonna run the flat of these blades all the way through 180, 220, then scotch Bright to give them a real nice satin finish. But the edge is gonna be left at about a 180 finish to give it that real box cutter like look. Bill has done a stellar job grinding and polishing these blades. He's now handed them off to me to strike in the lines on the narrow wheel that mimic the segments on a box cutter blade. So I got the pieces back from the CNC cut. I had John go ahead and tack weld these together so I can go through, grind a lot of this off, round everything else so it's nice and comfortable fit in your hand.
All right, I have my Attack on Titan handle for the sword. As you can see, I've already drilled some holes out to take some of the weight off of it. And as you can see, this has actually been milled out except the blades and other parts. Cut out a piece of brass, which is gonna pop, as you see right in here. That's uh, made me a nice little spring. We're actually gonna make a trigger on here. Now, the trigger's not gonna be functional on the weapon itself, but it's gonna look good, so when you get in there, it actually works. We're working on the uh, grip appliques for Attack on Titan, the pistol grip part of the sword. We're taking some slabs of walnut. We've cut them down, shaped them up. We're going to go ahead and start to draw in that checkerboard pattern. So we'll do one side, then we'll flip it this way and try to stay pretty consistent with the same width and the same arc of the curve. So we got a basic pattern laid out here. We've already finished the other side for the grip. So we'll take our Dremel. I'm using a cylinder, a small cylinder cutter. I do what's called free flow carving. So when I get in here, I'm going to go right on that edge angle and I'm gonna work that contour. I'm holding like this, supporting one hand against the other all the time. And this way I can work both the material and the tool at the same time and keep one nice consistent pass of that arc. And I'm going to cut in the opposite direction. This way I get a nice V cut in here. We're going to flip it around and start to do the same exact thing with the other arc to create our checker pattern. All right, as you can see here, I have the attack on Titan sword guard. I've located the pin for the hinge device that's gonna lock the blade in and also release it. Now I gotta go through in here and clean all the internal parts out so I can get this thing together. Once this, they release this, this will actually push the blade forward. This will sink in to here, which allows the blade to come out. Now that we've finished this weapon with its multiple blades, it's pretty easy to see that it's far more complex than it might be if you were just thinking you could just stick it in the hole and everything would work. Bill really stepped up, fitted all these parts, made the locking mechanisms work, and the blades cut fantastically. Click here to subscribe or click here to watch more episodes. Thanks for watching Man at Arms Reforged. We need to know what you want the guys to build, so tell us in the comments below what weapons you want to see next.